Okay, so now we have for day two of our review. Uh, we'll take a look at some expanding. We know that expanding, what does that mean in terms of a multiple, or a, sorry, a mathematical operation? I just give it the other way. So expanding is multiplication, and the opposite of expanding is factoring, which would then indicate dividing. That's the opposite. So if we have 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 1, we have both terms of the first bracket multiplied by both terms of the second bracket. So we have 2x times 2x plus 1 here, and then negative 3 times 2x plus 1 here. We expand that out, so we get 4x squared plus 2x, and then minus 6x minus 3, and we group the two middle terms together to get negative 4x. Now if we were to reverse that process, we start here and we split apart this negative 4x to get positive 2x minus 6x. We're going to group the first two terms, group the, the third and fourth terms. And when you group the third and fourth terms, we're going to keep the brackets, sorry, keep the negatives in the brackets. And then they would be separated by a uh, plus sign then. And then we common factor out of here which is 2x, we common factor out of the second bracket, which is negative 3. And the two brackets that are remaining are uh, the same, which is great. That's exactly what we need. And so then here, we see we've got two terms remaining. 2x times 2x plus 1 and negative 3 times 2x plus 1. We'll factor out what's common. And the common thing between those two terms is the bracket, which is 2x plus 1. So that comes out front, and what's remaining then is 2x minus 3. And then I'll just flip that around to give me the same form as we had at the beginning. Okay, so expanding is multiplying and factoring is dividing. So we're going to be looking at now um, a few forms of trinomials. And when we factor trinomials, uh, we want to take a look at, see if we can identify some of these forms. Okay, so let me just zoom in just a tiny bit here and try to get... A little bit closer, maybe not that close. Okay, so um, there are um, basically five main types of binomials. I'm sure, or sorry, trinomials. I'm sure there's many more, but here are the the main ones that you'll see, where there's just one variable in the two brackets. Um, here there will be two variables in both brackets. Here there will be a, a square um, in the bracket, the square of the variable. Because if a square times a square, that will give you to the power 4. Um, and then we'll have both variables are squared. So we get x to the power 4 and y to the power 4. And the middle term is x squared, y squared. And then here in this case, we'll have two variables that are multiplied together. Um, thus giving us the x squared, y squared term at the beginning here. Okay, so when we start to factor, what's the first thing you need to factor, or what's the first thing you need to do when you're trying to factor? Basically, you always want to factor completely all the time, simplify things as much as possible. So if you see something like this, what should be the first thing you'll, you look for? Okay, so we'll take a look at, is there any, are there any common factors there? Okay, look for common factors in all three of those terms. What do you see? Okay, so factor that, that greatest common factor. And I believe it's 2a. And we're left with 8 minus 6ab minus 9a squared b squared. Now, what's the next step? Go ahead and do that, please. Now what I like doing is I usually like having this squared term at the beginning because uh, that's what I'm most comfortable seeing. So I'm just going to turn that around and at the same time I want that expression to begin with an, a positive. So I'm going to factor out that negative at the same time. So factor out a negative and put it in front of the 2a. Then we're going to have that 9ab plus 6ab, sorry 9a squared b squared and then minus 8. Okay, so when we want to factor, we need to factor completely, and we want to factor this down, because that's the trinomial. What form is it, does it appear like here? Okay, so it's similar to this form here. 
so what we're going to do now is um, either use decomposition or guess and check or uh, sum across products which is basically guess and check with a little bit of structure and we'll see if we can factor that down okay so try to do that and come back to see my technique please okay so now I'm going to use uh, sum across products because it seems to be easiest to grasp and it's a little quicker in, t in, in most instances so I'll take a look at the 9 a squared b squared and I ask myself what two factors will multiply to give me 9 a squared b squared and I'm going to I could say 9 a b and 1 a b but chances are it'll be 3 a b and 3 a b that's just a hunch that I have now we've also got this product here this sorry this constant which is negative 8 so if you have two constants that multiply together to give you a negative what are the signs of those two constants? Okay, so they have to be opposites to give a negative because two negatives multiplied together will give you positive as will two positives multiplied together. And we see that the sum of those two will give us a positive so that means that the larger of the two products that we're going to be looking for has to be positive. So that will give us other clues as to how to work this out. So I know that the two terms will multiply, sorry, the two factors multiply together to give negative 8. So, and because this is going to end up to be positive here, I'm going to say this is going to be positive 4 and negative 2. So positive 4 times negative 2 gives negative 8. 3ab times 3ab gives me 9a squared b squared. So, so far so good. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I get 12ab. Then I get down here negative 6ab so that's the cross products and then I add them so you get the sum of cross products you get 6ab and I check with the middle term here which is 6ab so that means that these are the terms that we want the factors that we want so we now just write that out I get negative 2a times 3ab plus 4 and 3ab minus 2 Okay, so if you happen to guess incorrectly there, don't worry about it. Just um, if you had the signs incorrect, or you had 8 and 1 there, or 2 and 4 there, it doesn't matter. Um, just rearrange it and try again. Just cross multiply again and add them and see if you get that middle term again. Okay, the most important thing to start out with is that these two product or these two factors will give you that product, and these two factors will give you that product. And that's the beginning, which is the most helpful. Okay. Now we're going to move on to factoring differences of squares. Oh, sorry. That sum of terms that I was trying to add up didn't uh, show on the video. Sorry about that. And so now, factoring differences of squares. Uh, like yesterday, we started out with multiplying a, uh, a difference in a, in a sum. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the difference of squares. So a difference, which is subtraction, of two squares. So that's why we have the difference of squares. Um, will give us a form in this, or will give us the uh, factored form like that. So now remember what we're going to be looking for. Very first thing to look for anytime you want to factor. Okay, so we look for a common factor. Factor that out and see what you get. So I see I'm going to get from 18 and 50, the largest common factor is 2. And we've got an m cubed and an m, so a factor of the m there. So that leaves me with 9m squared minus 25r squared. Notice that it's now in this form. So we got a square, 9m squared. 25r squared is another square and it's a difference. So it's the difference of squares. So now we just take the square root of both of those terms, put them both in each sets of brackets, one with subtraction and one with addition. So go ahead and do that please. And we'll leave you with then 3m and 5r, 3m and 5r, one has a minus and one has a plus. 
and it does not matter. You could put the plus there and the minus there. For some reason, I always just put the minus first. Okay, and then the last little bit here, the last example we have. I'm just hitting this over. This is a trickier form of a difference of squares, but if you really examine it, we got x plus 1 squared, so there's a square. 4 is a square, 2 squared. And again, 25t squared is also a square. And there's a difference between them, so this has to fall under the, the form of difference of squares. So go ahead and work on that first. Take the square roots of both of those terms and put them in the appropriate form, please. So I'm going to have 2x plus 1 minus 5t. I'll put that in square brackets because we already have round brackets there. And then we've got 2x plus 1 plus 5t. A lot, of, a lot of times with these, when we expand out the middle part here, things kind of simplify down even more. Um, especially if perhaps there were an x here. Uh, in this case, but because we have two different variables, it's not going to it's not going to simplify too much. But um, let's just simplify down a little bit inside the brackets. So go ahead and simplify there a little bit, and we get two x plus two minus five t, and two x plus two plus five t. Now there's not a whole lot of simplification you can do there. We can maybe move the constant to the end and bring in the 5t, but then it's not alphabetical order, but that's not really a hard and fast rule either. So what I will do, actually, I'll just write this out. And leave uh, it not in alphabetical order, because if I were to put it in alphabetical order, then that negative would be at the beginning, then I have to factor out a negative, and then, you know, the process just continues on and on. Okay, so that is the lesson for today. There's your work that we'll be working on in class tomorrow.